Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turner Podcast, the podcast and talk show where we have digital discussions from the worlds of TV, film, pop culture, news, social media, lifestyle, everything really, depending on the guests, we talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Peter Miliotis. On social media, you know me as PD Beats. My guest is an actor, a storyteller. You will recognize her from a lot of really cool TV shows. Most recently, you will recognize her in The Queen's Gambit on Netflix. We have Christiane Seidel. Christiane, welcome to Pop Turnative. Thank you for having me. No problem. We'll get into the Queen's Gambit, but very quickly for you, kind of as a storyteller, actor, performer, because that's what I want to like. That's what I call you guys. You guys are storytellers. You guys, that's that's what you do basically. When did you decide that was something you wanted to do? Oh, good question. Um, I kind of had it always in me, um, but I think that the final decision making um, moment was I was actually. Uh, on a semester abroad in Cape Town, South Africa, because I was studying business. Mm -hmm. And I went to uh, a film school. And that's where I really got in contact with behind the camera, in front of the camera. And that's where it solidified. I was like, I have to, I, I, I finished my studies, but then I started studying acting right after. And I feel like it's really interesting because I recently, you know, I studied, um, uh, like cinema and film in college for a little bit that I moved more to communications. But I mean, it, it always interests me whether it's like in front of the camera or behind the camera, like just making content and making a movie or TV mm -hmm. show just seemed like to be like the most intriguing thing at the time. Like, how do you do it? You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. It's, it's fascinating because it's such a big team effort, right? Like mm -hmm. you, you miss one part of it. You can't you can't create the same thing. Absolutely. So the Queen's Gavit's on Netflix right now, and it is taking the world by storm. I mean, congrats <laughs> to you and the cast and crew. I mean, the reception has been insane. Like, how has it been on your end? I mean, it's just like it, it's just blowing my mind. Of course, it's so exciting to be a part of something this well received, right? And um, it was completely unexpected in a way. I mean, I expected it would be doing well because. Uh, you know, Scott Frank, who was just a genius. He did Godless before and a ton of other things. But um, I just think that somehow it's a show that anyone can watch, you know, from all kinds of generations. There's generations. There's something for anyone. Absolutely. And it's beautiful to look at the costumes and the, and the um, production design, of course, camera work. And the music, I think, is incredible. I know. It, there's so many different yeah. elements of it. The one element that kind of stands out for me, Christiane, why I think it's so popular is you're diving into, I mean, you know, the show is about this character kind of going through a tough time with addiction and substance abuse and all the relationships and everything. But it's also about chess, a world that we don't, although there has been shows and movies about chess in the past, mm -hmm. you're, we're kind of being exposed to a world that not many people really know about. Like not right. many people maybe know about the chess world. Exactly. I knew nothing about this chess world. I don't even, I didn't even know how to play chess, right? And you don't need to know. It's a sports movie in a way, and it's mm -hmm. a coming of age story, and it's, it's like now everyone wants to play chess, right? Absolutely. <laughs> it's um, not a bad thing. For people that haven't uh, had a chance to check it out yet, um, can you tell them what kind of they could expect with the King Queen's Gambit, and a little bit about your character in it as well? Yeah, so the Queen's Gambit uh, follows a uh, eight year nine year old orphan, um, or it starts uh, with with a girl who's orphaned, and she uh, learns to play chess in the basement with a um, with a janitor, and she becomes a chess prodigy. And we're in the sixties, seventies, um, and uh, it's a it's a very male dominated sport. So we have that, and we have addiction you mentioned addiction i don't want to tell people too much but mm -hmm. that's based on truth how she gets addicted it's, it's horrifying mm -hmm. my character is um in in the time zone or in the time period where she uh beth Harmon, the, the lead uh comes to the orphanage i run the orphanage mm -hmm. and i'm mrs Theodore. and i actually realize as i'm sitting here i have to show you this um oh, absolutely. i have look, I got this from set. 
Wow. <laughs> That's always a question I ask. It's like, do you are you able to take things from the set? That's awesome. That was actually a gift like um they gave me on the last day. I loved it. It was it was a prop from my desk. So now it's in my little office here. So That's so cool. <laughs> it's so funny because I was listening I was uh interviewing some like there's so many amazing TV shows on all these different streaming uh platforms right now. And I, right. it's funny because I interviewed, um, there's uh, Jason Sudeikis' show on Apple TV plus Ted Lasso about the soccer mm -hmm. team. Mm -hmm. And I'm a big fan of the show and I'm talking to like the, the cast members of the, of the, of the show. And I'm like, you know, like, is there merch? Cause it's like a, it's like a, a big <laughs> team. Like, is there merchandise? Is there anything like, do you have anything? And everyone's like, I know like everyone wants the merchandise. Everyone right. wants the props, <laughs> which I find is really Really interesting there. Um, you had an opportunity. You've had an opportunity in the past to be to have become on a pretty like big show with a lot of hype around it. I mean, the Queen's Gambit. I mean, you said it like you're just like blown away by the yeah. you know um, the exposure and the reception. However, when I saw the trailers and and on um, online and everything i knew it, i had an idea that there was something with this that it was going to be very popular i just had an idea boardwalk empire was also a show that you were on that was on hbo that had a lot of kind of um success and there's a lot of hype around it so it's not your first rodeo in terms of being on like a big show like this right was that kind of easier for you a little bit with the reception we weren't totally caught off guard Yes. Uh, yes, I wasn't because I was also, you know, I came on towards the end of season two. I wasn't even supposed to be there very long. Like I auditioned for maybe one episode two. I just held my breath all the time because I never knew what was going to happen to my character. I found out later they had all these different options for the character, like die or leave or do something crazy. Yeah. But they loved the dynamic between Michael, Shannon and me. Yep. Um, so that was lucky. But, you know, I was sort of. I was only in that little, not little, but I was part of his storyline and I wasn't a major player of the, of, of Boardwalk, right? There were so many different, we had Chicago, we had New York, we had Atlantic City. So I never got into, it, it, it was also such a long running show too, mm -hmm. right? This yeah. one is a one-off. It's like binging is, is, is now what we do. That wasn't happening then. It's still not happening on HBO. Mm -hmm. I guess you can if you wait, <laughs> but it wasn't the same. It, it was this slow, uh, it became this really big success uh, with a lot of fans. But yeah. this one is just, I think the pandemic, sadly, you know, the pandemic is really helping that people are just stuck at home and they're like finishing Netflix. I think there's like shows, especially like, uh, cause you're part of like the Netflix family and Netflix has pumped out, like, especially in the beginning. I mean, Outer yeah. Banks, Tiger King, a lot of shows that like, you know, it just exploded so quick. And it's funny because the Queen's Gambit, you know, there are other shows on Netflix, Slow Burn, which is like the norm, right? Like you, yeah. a show gets posted on Netflix. I feel like the, the Queen's Gambit kind of took off pretty quick. Like it dropped and a yes. lot of people watch it right away. Yeah. And you know, I think also the difference this time is Netflix is, and they have recently, they came out with this article um, or statement where they said, we don't see ourselves as a Hollywood uh, entertainment uh, streamer anymore. We, we are a worldwide uh, me media outlet. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting messages from all over the world where people are watching it at the same time, right? It comes out at the same time. With Boardwalk, I'm German and Danish. Like, it never really became big there. It wasn't really pushed there. It didn't work as well as it did here. So now we have the whole world, which is insane. And it's, like, number one on Netflix worldwide for, for almost since it came out. Has that sunk in that you're part of a show that's number one on Netflix right now? No. <laughs> no, it's crazy. And also because we're all home, right? It's like we don't have premieres and we don't have red carpets. And it's all, uh, you know, it's like sort of virtual. I know. It's just kind of a crazy, crazy world. Um, the one thing I've kind of realized as well is, you know, this show kind of drops on Netflix. And the reception was obviously, like you said... It's funny you mention that because it's like a global reception. I mean, there's also going to be a lot of people on this TV show that have, you know, done movies, big movies and small and, and uh, movies in the past. But there's a lot of people that haven't. Mm -hmm. So someone that kind of was on this set that's worked 
on big shows, like maybe talking about them during like the pandemic, like afterwards on, on Instagram or something like what advice have you, uh, like, how's it been for the people who are not used to kind of being on a show before? Like, I'm sure it's, it's been pretty crazy for them, right? Like, there's a lot of actors that we haven't seen before, that this is probably their first big break. Like, have you given any of them advice about kind of taking it day by day and everything? <laughs> no, I, I, I haven't. I mean, I, I talked to, uh, you know, some of some of the actors I'm friends with, because I either worked with them before, or, you know. we But there were a lot of... Um, uh, you know, I was only in that one time where she's in the orphanage. So I haven't even met a lot of the other actors yeah. because it was just confined to that location. And I think that was the case for many. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I'm actually, it's funny. There's a, a lot of kids, obviously kid actors on the show too. And I know that um, through Instagram, I, I, I talked to a mom of one of the kids and she's just, you know, not just, but she's a, she was a background actor on this. And now she's like doing these movies, like as a child actor in Germany. So I think there's so much happening for so many people on this. I know it's, 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 it's incredible for people that, you know, um, you, you mentioned there's a lot kind of going on. This is a question I, I always ask this just in case, cause honestly, Christiane, you can, you never know. Have you watched season one of The Queen's Gambit, correct? I have. Okay. I can't assume that everyone watches what they're in. You can't do that. I've learned that before in the past. Some people don't yeah. or haven't had the time. Like, it's it's a thing. Like, you can't assume everyone's watched their own projects. Yeah, it's true. It's true. It's not always pleasant to watch. Your, usually it's not pleasant. <laughs> but I wanted to know what else. Yes, I knew all the scripts. You know, I talked to Scott for this for a long time. I've read the book. I wanted to see it. Mm-hmm. I want to see it as a as an audience member. Like, what does it look like? So, what you because you mentioned when you were talking about it, the music, the look, the aesthetic, the dialogue. What kind of stood out for you? The first thing that kind of stood out because I want your answer, but then I'm going to tell you what really got my attention in it as well. And I'm I'm wondering if if we have like the same kind of answer. But what like is there one that's predominant than the other in terms of like what really like made, yeah. like, made you enjoy what you saw basically? I mean, obviously the actors, I thought there's not a single bad actor, like everyone is outstanding. And I love that nobody is like totally immediately like a household name. I know Anya is completely, you know, blowing up and she is known by many, but it's not like someone, nobody in the show, unless you're really a film buff, is is like totally recognizable, which makes it so great to really immerse yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, but I will say if, if we're talking about other than something other than actors, I think the product, it's hard to say, like the, I love the production design. It looks amazing. You see all the wallpaper and, you know, it's just like a dream and it's a psychedelic dream sometimes, but it's so on point. I will say the music completely blew me away, but it's the same, uh, Carlos, the same, um, composer from Godless and he's just brilliant. What I really liked is I'm a big fan of, and I actually talked to your godless um, co-star um, Adam David Thompson about this because he's on another show, a teacher on Hulu um, FX that basically has like has a lot of this. I'm a big fan of like dialogue, Christiane, and dialogue like there's in this show there's a lot of dialogue between two characters where like it's a dialogue where it doesn't seem like it's like, a big deal, like it's just two people talking, but like you as the audience member is just like, damn. Like, like there's a lot to dissect in this conversation. Do you know what I mean by that? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And this is Scott Frank. I mean, it's like mind blowing. He sent me the scripts as they were developing. And I I just like, there's nothing. There's always so much more than what you see on the page. And you, you just also, when you read those scripts is that you can see it. You see what he's doing and it, it's he that's why he's so brilliant at what he does you know that's why he's so successful it, it's really difficult to write such brilliant storylines and um and dialogue absolutely yeah. no it is it is crazy well christiane thank you so much for coming on the show for a little bit i really appreciate uh, your time thank you so much oh thanks for having me this is great um so people can watch the queen's gambit like right now on netflix like it's a good yeah, yeah. Anytime. Which is amazing. Um, and where can people follow you on social media to keep up to date with everything? Uh, mostly Instagram. Um, it's me, Christiane. I got hacked on my Facebook. 
So I can't even like for the life of me get that back up. It's been <laughs> crazy. So I'm really mostly on Instagram. Amazing. Well, seriously, yeah. congrats to you and the cast and crew of The Queen's Gambit. And I hope the success just Thank kind you. of continues and continues. Um, I have a feeling it's 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 not going <laughs> to go away. Netflix kind of has this like thing where their shows are kind of just there for a long, long time, even if it's not like the immediate kind of explosion like I, ta I talked to you about. But there mm -hmm. seems to be like a, a pretty long window for a lot of these shows, especially during the pandemic. So. Oh yeah, yeah, and it's all a lot of it is word of, word of mouth, right? They don't even advertise that much. It's just I, it's funny you say that because that I I I saw that with Outer Banks because Outer Banks basically um came out right at like the peak of the pandemic, and mm -hmm. you know people were saying that it was like the new age, you know Dawson's Creek and OC, and there was a trailer that I got posted and you know like a few interviews were out there with the cast and people were mm -hmm. like okay cool i'm gonna watch it you know what i mean and then it just yeah. <laughs> exploded <laughs> it's crazy yeah. i think it was crazy because um and like it hasn't been that long since queen's gambit's been out right no uh october 23rd so not yeah. even like three weeks yeah yeah it's, it's been three weeks and we're talking about it <laughs> it's like <laughs> number one like it's pretty crazy yeah. Like other banks, it was literally like the show came out on a Friday, and I interviewed people on the Tuesday. Wow! Like, yeah, and it was like exploded. I know it's just like you. It hasn't. It wasn't even like a week. You know, you say like it hasn't even been a month. Like it hasn't even been a month technically for Queen's Gambit. No, not even. Yeah. Like people, I mean, I can't tell you the amount of people that told me I watched it in like twenty four hours. Mm -hmm. Just, it's definitely it's weird because it definitely is like it's it's very heavy and it's like you know a drama and everything but it's weird like it's not it is a it's 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 bingeable i find like it is yeah. easy to kind of just go and watch it for like a two like one or two days like it is bingeable some shows though i find are heavier you know i'm hearing like the new season of the crown i'm hearing is like you can't just you gotta kind of like take a yeah. break yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which is awesome. But seriously, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. No Be problem. safe and health. Stay healthy. Yeah, you too. Well, this has been Pop Turnative, YouTube.com slash Pop Turnative. For previous episodes, you can catch Christiane Seidel in The Queen's Gambit, available now on Netflix. Until next time, this is Christiane, Christiane and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Poptternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.